Welcome to If Numbers Could Talk. My name is Keelan. If Numbers Could Talk is a part of the Thinkering Group. You can find us over at thinkering.space. You can also find at Thinkering Space the Thinkering Talks podcast, the Exofathom podcast, along with the Plank Talks with Joe. When you get a chance, please check out our merchandise. We have merchandise on our website, thinkering.space, as well as merchandise at teespring.com slash thinkering shop. Please visit, grab a t-shirt, grab a mug. We'll appreciate it. And when you do, feel free to let us know that you've decided to become a member of any of our fan clubs. Today's episode of If Numbers Could Talk is going to be really cool, in my opinion. I like it. I hope you love it. Let's jump into it, guys. So today's episode is titled Going Against the Bean. Now, if you know what basketball is, then you know what the NBA is. And if you know what the NBA is, and I'd say you're anything over about 10 or 11 years old in what is today, 2021, you know who the bean is. Kobe Bean Bryant, to be specific. And so today's episode is about going against the bean versus Kobe. Who went versus Kobe? Who do we note as going versus Kobe? Who do we remember? Who did we look forward to? And what statistics validate the guys who chose and I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna say it that way today. Those guys who chose to take on the task of going against the one, the only, Kobe Bean Bryant. Well, I made a list. It's not a thorough list. It's not every single person who ever went against Kobe. It's not a list of necessarily all of the very, very, very top level guys that went against Kobe. That would probably be a much longer list than the list I made. Instead, the list I have today is a hand-selected list, of course, hand-selected by me. Guys that I simply wanted to go over their journey versus Kobe Bryant. How you doing, guys? So when I say their journey versus Kobe Bryant, I don't necessarily mean, you know, the entire duration of their career. I only mean their games versus Kobe Bryant. There are a couple of guys that I did not put on the list. I didn't want to make it excessively long because as I continue to, oh, I could add this guy. Oh, I could add this guy. I think I ended up around 10 or 11 and I wanted to keep it to five or six. So I'll name two of the guys that were really hard for me to take off this list. I won't name the others, but I'll name two guys that were really hard for me to take off this list, but I did it anyway. Um, I, st- I tried to find reasoning to, to give you guys like, oh, they played for the same team. There were other guys that played for the same team that I put on the list. Um, I thought, oh, well, you know, they didn't average a certain amount of points. There was other guys on the list that didn't average a certain amount of points. Oh, well, they weren't the first, the number one option on their team. Well, if I did that, then we'd be doing a rankings versus Kobe type of an episode. And then I just decided I'm going to take them off and then I'm simply going to tell you who they are and allow you to go and look at what they brung to the table versus the one, the only Kobe Bean Bryant. So again, this episode is going against the bean. Two of the gentlemen I did not add to this list are two of the greatest defenders on paper that we talk about when we talk about guys who defended Kobe Bryant, guys who defended the bean, going against the bean. One of those guys is Shane Battier. And the other guy is Tony Allen. Just want to let you guys know ahead of time, for those who are looking forward to those particular names, I will not be covering those particular stats today. Those numbers will not be covered. I mean, I could name other guys, Dirk, Shaq, you know, they're not at it either. But Shane Battier and Tony Allen will not be on this list. On this list, what I have is a couple of guys in their stats. Season numbers versus Kobe Bryant, season averages, and how many games won and lost versus Kobe in the season and in the playoffs if they got to play against Kobe in the playoffs. Let's get started. 
the very first person on this list, and this is in no particular order, this is not in any particular order. The only order here is the order of um, anticipation or, you know, just we went from this guy to this guy. Oh, that's the next guy we have. So just expect this to get a little more like, oh, wow, that's the next guy. Um, that's the only thing I'm giving you towards who's next. <laughs> so the first guy we're going to start with is one Raja Bell. Again, we did not add Shane Battier. We did not add Tony Allen. But I stuck to, you know, again, those guys who we knew for defending Kobe, the guys we looked for to playing against Kobe. You just, you heard Co uh, against Kobe or going against the bean. You heard versus Kobe. And you, if it was one of these guys, you knew it was going to be a good game. Raja Bell is the first player. Raja Bell played 28 games versus Kobe Bryant. And of those 28, Raja's team won 14 of 28. So his record versus Kobe Bryant, Raja Bell, his record, 14 and 14 versus Kobe Bryant. His averages, 10.3 points, 2.7 rebounds. 1.3 assists, 0.5 steals, 0.5 blocks, and 0.9 turnovers versus Kobe Bryant. Yes, we're doing turnovers today, guys. 0.9 turnovers. Now, Kobe's numbers during the season versus Raja Bell, 14 and 14 on the record, 28.8 points, 5.4 rebounds, 4.4 assists. 1.4 steals, 0.4 blocks, and 3.1 turnovers. 3.1 turnovers. A common thread you will see, not just because Kobe is a primary player, uh, one of the top decision makers and or sometimes ball handlers for his team, um, taking most of the big shots, those kind of things, having the ball in the big moments. What you will notice a common thread of is these are guys who caused a guy like Kobe Bryant to have a different level of turnover ratio compared to other players. So again, Rajah Bell, 10.3, 2.7 rebounds, 1.4 assists, 0.5 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 0.9 turnovers versus Kobe Bryant in, in 28 games. Kobe Bryant versus Raja Bell, Raja Bell, excuse me, 28.8 points, 5.4 rebounds, 4.4 assists, 1.4 steals, 0.4 blocks, and 3.1 turnovers in the season. Now, these gentlemen also played 16 playoff games versus one another. However, once again, they split them evenly, 8-8. Eight and eight. So Kobe Bryant and Raja Bell all together are 22 and 22 versus one another of the entire 44 games they played in their career versus one another. However, back to the playoffs, they are eight and eight in the playoffs. Raja Bell averaged 7.6 points, 2.6 rebounds, 1.8 assists. 1.2 steals, 0.2 blocks, and 0.6 turnovers in the playoffs versus Kobe Bryant. While Kobe averaged 27 points, 6.3 rebounds, 5.1 assists, 1.1 steals, 0.8 blocks, and 4.1 turnovers for Kobe Bryant versus Raja Bell. In the NBA playoffs for a total of 16 games, they played against one another. Now, just by starting, giving you the very first player, you guys will note I am not necessarily talking about the teams that these guys played for. I am not giving any credit to the surrounding cast members, only the players who were um, going against Kobe Bryant and the analysis in which I am putting forth. I like how I said that. I don't know if that translated well to you guys' ear, but I like how I smashed those, those words together. It really came out well. <laughs> Thanks for playing along. So the next player 
the next guy we have on our list, the next uh, rival of Kobe Bryant's, the next guy to go against the bean. Bruce Bowen. Bruce Bowen. Bruce Bowen played a total of 32 games versus Kobe Bryant. And Bruce Bowen's team came out on top 18 to 14 games. 18 games won, 14 games lost for one Bruce Bowen and his team. Bruce Bowen is the only player on this list to for whom his team won more games than Kobe Bryant's team. While Raja is the only player as well to tie his team to tie with Kobe Bryant's team. So Bruce Bowen, his team, 18 and 14 versus a Kobe Bryant team. Averaged eight points, 3.3 rebounds, 1.2 assists, 0.9 steals, 0.4 blocks with 0.8 turnovers for Bruce Bowen. 0.8 turnovers for Bruce Bowen. Now, also keeping in mind, a good a good chunk of these guys were not the primary ball handlers. They were not the primary decision makers for their team. However, they still had very pivotal roles. Hence, they went down in history as being some of the major guys to go against Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant versus Raja. I mean, excuse me. I apologize for that. Kobe Bryant versus Bruce Bowen. Kobe's teams went 14 and 18. That's right. They won 14 and lost 18 games versus a Bruce Bowen team. Kobe's average, averages, excuse me, 26.3 points, 6.1 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 1.9 steals, 0.7 blocks with 3.6 turnovers for Kobe Bryant versus a Bruce Bowen team. Now, Bruce Bowen and Kobe Bryant played 22 playoff games versus one another. 22 playoff games versus one another. In those 22 playoff games, a Bruce Bowen team went 8 and 14. So while the Bruce Bowen teams won the season battle versus Kobe Bryant, they did not win the playoff battles versus Kobe Bryant. So in 22 games, a Bruce Bowen team won eight of four, eight and lost 14, while Bruce Bowen averaged eight points, 2.2 uh, rebounds, excuse me, 1.1 assists, 0.7 steals, 0.6 blocks with 0.3 turnovers in the playoffs for one Bruce Bowen while playing versus a Kobe Bryant team. Kobe Bryant in the playoffs, Kobe Bryant in his 22 playoff games versus a Bruce Bowen team. Well, the Kobe teams would always would usually come out on top. They won this battle. 14 and 8 is what that record was. They won 14 and lost 8. In those battles, Kobe Bryant averaged 28.6 points, 5.6 rebounds, 4.5 assists with 1.3 steals, 0.1 blocks, and 3.1 turnovers for Kobe Bryant in the playoffs versus a Bruce Bowen team. Now, again, these are the guys who we remember them for having great games versus Kobe, whether it was on the offensive or the defensive end or both. This next guy, I believe, is one of those guys that came out on both. He had great Battles against Kobe on both the offensive and defensive end. However, his teams did not per se come out on top versus Kobe Bryant teams, rather in the playoffs or in the regular season. The next player on our list is a guy who became later after being a Kobe Bryant rival, a Kobe Bryant teammate, Meta World Peace. Meta World Peace played 20 games in the season versus Kobe Bryant. Where a Metal World Peace team lost that battle five to fifteen, they won five and lost fifteen games versus a Kobe Bryant team. During that, Meta averaged sixteen point seven points, five rebounds, two point nine assists, two point seven steals, 
0.9 blocks and 2.7 turnovers for a Meta World Peace going versus a Kobe Bryant team during the season. While a Kobe Bryant team won 15 of those 20 games and lost five, during which Kobe averaged 27.6 points, 5.7 rebounds, 6.1 assists. Wow. Two steals, 0.6 blocks. That's crazy. Two steals. 0.6 blocks and 3.6 turnovers. 3.6 turnovers for a Kobe Bryant versus a Metal World Peace team during the regular season. During the regular season. Now, keep in mind, we also have to count up what they did versus one another in the playoffs. Metal World Peace and Kobe Bryant played a total of seven playoff games versus one another. That's only one series. They went to game seven. The Metal World Peace team went three and four versus the Kobe Bryant team, which means they lost that series. They won three games, lost four. With fifth, Meadow averaged 15.6 points, 5.3 rebounds, four assists, 1.1 steals with 0.3 blocks and 2.6 turnovers for Meta World Peace in the playoffs versus the Kobe Bryant team. While Kobe had in the playoffs versus a Metal World Peace team, they won four and lost three games. That was only one series. Again, they only played one series against one another. During which Kobe averaged 27.4 points, five rebounds, 3.7 assists with two steals, 1.3 blocks, and 1.6 turnovers for Kobe being Bryant. It's interesting to look at that and realize that Kobe in the playoffs had one of his lowest turnover uh, playoff series versus one of the most defensive players noted to play this game. That is incredible. It's also incredible to note that that was the same series that after which Kobe apparently contacted Ron and let him know, hey, I'd like for you to come to the Lakers. And I recently heard, I can't remember exactly which player said this in an interview, that um, Ron or Metal World Peace came into the locker room and basically let the guys know, hey, yeah, uh, I'll be playing with Kobe next year. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how that story goes or how true it is, but it's a pretty funny story to hear. So next on our list. So, so far we have Raja Bell, Bruce Bowen, and Metal World Peace as three of the players that we have already noted to have played and gone against the Bean. Again, two players we will not be discussing their numbers, Shane Battier and Tony Allen. The next player on our list is a guy that everybody knows was a huge rival versus Kobe Bryant. Kobe talked about him being one of the most difficult players he played against. Um, they always talked about how great it was to play against one another. And I can honestly say, as a fan, I enjoyed every single game they had versus one another. Even when one of the two were not necessarily uh, at 100%, you got a pretty good show either way. The player that we're talking about is, of course, T-Mac, Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady played 21 season games versus Kobe Bryant. And of those 21 games, a Tracy McGrady team, a T-Mac team won seven games. They won seven and lost 14, during which Tracy averaged 17.9 points with 4.8 rebounds, 4.8 assists to add, 0.8 steals, 0.9 blocks, and 2.3 turnovers for Tracy McGrady. During those same 21 games, a Kobe Bryant team won 14 games and lost seven. Kobe Bryant averaged 26.9 points with 5.4 rebounds, 5.3 assists, 1.4 steals, 0.6 blocks, and 3.1 turnovers for Kobe Bryant in his seasons, seasoned games versus T-Mac, Tracy McGrady. Now, here was a, a tidbit that I actually did not know because there was a good portion of their careers where they were on the same in the same conference. However, Tracy McGrady and Kobe Bryant never played in the playoffs against one another. 
I didn't know that until today. I was today years old. Well, not today years old when I did the research, but I was today years old when I found that out. I was today years old when I added that to my notes. And I thought that was very interesting because they had a lot of great battles, like 21 games, and they were all great battles. I mean, lopsided in the victory column, but to note that they did not play in the playoffs, I did not know that. I was a bit shocked. I had no clue. Um, that's not something you see necessarily with today's NBA, but there's a lot more movement in today's NBA. So we'll discuss that on another episode. So that is the end of the TMAC section of this particular episode. So Tracy McGrady and Kobe Bryant played 21 games versus one another. Kobe won 14. Tracy won seven. The next player on our list is the cousin of the last player on our list or relative in some way. I'm not sure how that ever plays out. Um, we know that they are related. I don't know if they are related by blood or by marriage. I don't think it's ever been discussed in depth, but they have both said that they are in fact in the same family tree. Those two players are Vince Carter and Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady was the last player we just discussed. And the player we are discussing next is Vince Carter. Vince Carter played 31 games versus Kobe Bryant in his career. Vince Carter won 11 of those 31 and lost 20, during which his during which he averaged during his team's losses and victories, he averaged 16 points, 3.4 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 0.9 steals, 0.4 blocks and had 1.6 turnovers for Vince Carter versus a Kobe Bryant team. Kobe Bryant versus a Vince Carter team had 20 victories and 11 losses while averaging 23.6 points, 5.3 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 1.4 steals, 0.4 blocks, and 3.5 turnovers for Vince Carter, or excuse me, for Kobe Bryant going versus Vince Carter in their 31 games, 31 matchups, tw Kobe won 20, Vince won 11. Once again, and I think it's actually very interesting that these are the two players that did not go to the playoffs versus Kobe Bryant. Now, Vince actually played the majority of his career on the East Eastern Conference and the East Coast. So that actually makes a lot of sense because I, I don't believe um, to my recollection that Vince Carter made it to the finals unless he was on Dallas in 2011, which I don't think he was. I'm, I didn't do the research on that. I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now. I, I have an idea where he was um, when that happened, when they won the ring. But to note, to date, Vince Carter, well, yeah, he couldn't have been because they won, right? So Vince Carter has never been to um, the playoffs to play against first or to play versus Kobe Bryant. That was interesting to me. That's all interesting. And now we move to, as I said at the top of the show, I didn't want to make the list too lengthy. So I'm going to give you a, a, basically a starting five and a sixth man. The two players we did, two of the players um, that we did not discuss that I chose to name and note for you were Shane Battier and Tony Allen. Please go and look up some of their games versus Kobe Bryant. They may not have been as spectacular on the points and all of those kind of things, but their defensive schemes versus a Kobe Bryant, the way they understood, hey, I, I need to get in this guy's uh, area and understand what's going on and slow him down because I can't stop him. That's what they were known for. That's what they were noted for. We may not even know them if it weren't for their ability to attempt to slow down a Kobe Bryant. But let's get to the last guy on our list. The final guy on our list is a guy that we all love. It's a guy that we all discuss. It's a guy that sometimes doesn't get the respect he deserves, but the guy that we are talking about, the bean, Going versus the going against the bean. He respected him and he knew what was going on with his game. That gentleman is Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson versus Kobe Bryant. 
Allen Iverson versus Kobe Bryant is our final matchup of the evening. Allen Iverson played 29 games versus Kobe Bryant. Allen Iverson's teams won 13 of those games and lost 16 of those games versus Kobe Bryant. During those games, 29 of which, Allen Iverson averaged 25.3 points, 3.5 rebounds, 7.1 assists, 2.2 steals, wow, 2.2 steals, 0.3 blocks, and 3.4 turnovers for Allen Iverson in the season versus a Kobe Bryant team. For Kobe Bryant in the season versus an Allen Iverson team, Kobe's teams would win, go on to win 16 of those games and lose 13 of those games, during which Kobe would average 24 points. First player to average on this list more than Kobe Bryant. 24 points, 5.1 rebounds, 5.3 assists, 1.1 steals, 0.8 blocks, and 3.1 turnovers for Kobe Bryant going versus an Allen Iverson team during the season. These were incredible battles, season, playoffs, you name it. These are two of the guys you like to watch play each other, period. No matter what, size difference didn't matter. There was no talent difference. There was no drop off in talent, period. Just know you will enjoy looking those up on YouTube for sure. Allen Iverson did play against Kobe Bryant in the playoffs. Kobe and Allen played a total of nine playoff games versus one another. In those games, Allen Iverson's teams only won one of nine and lost eight games versus a Kobe Bryant team. During which Allen Iverson averaged 30.7 points, 4.4 rebounds, 4.1 assists, 1.4 steals with 0.2 blocks and 2.1 turnovers for Allen Iverson when going against a Kobe Bryant team in the playoffs. Now, I will note that during this period of time, an Allen Iverson team going up against um, a Kobe Bryant team, one of those series was definitely a Kobe Bryant and a Shaq team. Just going to say that and leave it there. The other series, I have an idea, but didn't do the research, so I'm not going to speculate. So we just gave you the Allen Iverson numbers during the playoffs, but what about the Kobe numbers during the playoff versus an Allen Iverson team? Also, keep in mind that um, during the Allen Iverson playoffs versus Kobe Bryant is also that classic um, step over that we all know about. However, Kobe Bryant, during the playoffs versus Allen Iverson, a Kobe Bryant team would go on to win eight games and only lose one, during which Kobe Bryant averaged 28.6 points, 6.7 rebounds, six assists, 1.4 steals, 1.4 blocks, and have 3.2 turnovers per game for Kobe Bryant going versus an Allen Iverson team in the playoffs those are the guys that we i decided we were going to discuss this evening Raja bell bruce bowen meta world peace tracy mcgrady vince carter and alan iverson are your starting lineup and sixth man when it comes to going against the bean not saying that they are the best guys to ever do it not saying that they are in any particular list on this episode, but noting that they are definitely in the discussion when you talk about guys who did what it took to go against Kobe Bryant and be noticed, to go against the bean and be noticed for being on the same floor because everyone else virtually disappears when a guy of that magnitude steps out there. I thank you guys for tuning in. Please check us out every Tuesday, 
right here on the If Numbers Can Talk channel on the Thinkering Space podcast, Thinkering Talks over at Facebook. And please hit us with some subscribes. Visit our website, www.thinkering.space. We have plenty of media over there for you. A couple of merch stores, anything that you would like to look at, talk about, let us know. You can send me an email over at ifnumberscouldtalk at gmail.com. You could always also just drop comments on my videos. I'll get back to you that way as well. And I appreciate you all. If there's any other guys you'd like to see me do a list similar to, guys that went against certain players, if you want to see me add people to the list that went against Kobe Bryant um, or anything of that nature, please feel free to let me know. We are always open and loving about just comments and all kind of constructive criticism. That's what we're about around here. And I thank you for tuning in. Take care of yourself. Take care of those you love. And by all means, have a great evening.